All right, we're back again, and this time we are starting the primary wall panels. I'm considering the two walls on either side of me right now, the primary walls, that back wall is where the screen's gonna go, are in a way the most important decoration-wise, because that's gonna be in your site at all times. Today specifically, starting with the light panels, I feel like they're gonna be easier than the 3D texture panels and easier than the panels with the sound deadening stuff in them. I have everything drawn out in Adobe Illustrator to scale, so I'm hoping that means I could just take the measurement, transfer it, take the measurement, transfer it, and just be really meticulous and take my time, because once the first one's perfect, I can trace it right onto the other three. Best laid plans and all that, so let's see how complicated this gets. One side of the room has taller ceilings than the other because the duct work for the AC and all that, I think I pointed out in the previous video. So I measured it to the shorter side. The higher side is gonna have an extra little panel with a light so that when we're watching a movie, the main panel lights can turn off and the bottom ones can dim so you have that nice courtesy lighting along the floor that won't dilute the picture at all. The first thing I have to do with all the panels is cut them all the size. So I gotta cut all these down to 36 by 80 and I'm gonna build them into little boxes and the boxes are gonna go come out into the wall. That way if we move or have to do anything or access wires behind the wall, four lag bolts off, get the wall, four lag bolts back on, we're back in the Death Star. All in all, not bad. The line's straight, a couple chips like that. Even if this was gonna be the side I'd finish, a little bit of wood putty and a quick little sanding once that's dried, We'd have a nice perfect edge. Even little things like this I would cover up, but this is gonna be the backside. I see a lot of tutorials, people using MDF board. The cost of supplies is ridiculous now. I actually went with some subflooring and some plywood. It's gonna paint up nice. It's gonna have the right feel. I'm thinking the best way to do this is to not draw out each individual cut out for the light independently, but rather kind of give myself a grid to work off of. I just showed the file where it has the measurements of where all the cuts start. So I'm gonna do all the horizontal lines first. When I get all the way down the board horizontally, I can go for the vertical cut lines. And then it's just a matter of lining up the two and a half inch hole saw and connecting all the cuts. Seems simple, never done this before probably gonna end up being a lot harder than that. Once I get one done and one done right, not only can I use this as a template to trace around to get the side for all the wall panels, but each wall has four light panels. I can trace the exact thing on all four, then I know all four are exactly right and exactly straight. Okay, so that's the first board laid out. There was a lot of weird fractions on my design, like the uh, top and bottom light cutouts being 5.45, I made them 5.5. Took a little liberties with that just to make the spacing more even, but it fell into a nice pattern of a lot of three inch gaps, a lot of eight inch gaps, like the, the same kind of gaps throughout. So if you look at that part and you look at this part, it's pretty similar. It took a little while to get this done all the way down. So what I'm gonna do going the horizontal lines is put them in the middle of each cutout. Each cutout is two and a half inches wide. I have a two and a half inch sole saw, a hole saw. So if I park it in the middle and then I mark an inch and a quarter down and an inch and a quarter up from every start and end point of the cutouts, that's exactly where the hole saw line will go. Cut it nice and straight, jigsaw in the middle. I think we're getting there. That should do it. Where there's cross lines, it's either the start or the end of one of the cutouts. Where it gets really close together, it's because the lights are staggered and the end point of one is not necessarily the beginning point of the one in the next column. And I just thought of something clever, or obvious and I'm slow. I can just get the hole saw that I have, put it right down where it's supposed to be sawed, trace around it. So that's the next step. This is the hole saw. It has an arbor. If you're going to the store, this alone is a lot cheaper. That's with the assumption you have the piece that goes inside. This holds it straight. Do not try to do your holes without it. It's gonna jump and skid across your board and wreck the surface. Trace the backside, not the sawtooth side, so your line's not crap. Got dots put all over the board, exactly where I'm gonna screw it, but it just occurred to me, this is thin wood, it can break. So I'm gonna use a test piece, the long piece I cut off, 
and try to drill a hole in that first to see how bad it splinters where. One thing you can do to prevent some splintering is put painter's tape or masking tape on the side that you're drilling or maybe the side opposite. We're gonna play around and see. Of course, as soon as I start, the battery's dead. So this worked out pretty good. There's really not much. There's a little bit. I can hit it with a uh, sanding block. It's a super, super fine grit. It's for like finishing when you uh, mud a wall and you know sheetrock finishing. So that'll be great. It's our first cut. Even though it's on a piece of scrap. It's exciting that something's happening because I feel like I'm just down here milling and talking to myself. Well, I cooked through a couple batteries, but here we go. It's looking like something. Connecting all the holes is going to be much harder because I want those lines to be straight, but it's looking cool. I'm excited. Despite the test run, the back got chewed up pretty good. So this will no longer be the front because the little edges that had a problem with the cut lines is not nearly as bad as all this. This is subflooring, so that's why there's peeling and all that. If you use a different material, spend a little bit more money, probably won't have the issue. But if this is just gonna be inside a little box, I don't really care. All right, we gotta connect the holes to get that cool pill-shaped look. And then we're gonna have the face of our first light panel done. I'm super excited. For this, I'm using a jigsaw, I've got some clamps, and I'm gonna take a piece of shelving board with a factory edge so it's as straight as anything else I have to connect one line of them. I'll then cut that line, remove everything, reclamp everything, and try again. There's gonna be some sanding involved. Uh, I guess my holes were not 100% lined up. I don't think anything's gonna be 100% accurate. We are getting the general shape, which I'm excited about, but I want them to be uniform. I want them to be good. I'm not loving the T-square method because it's, it's moving slightly even with forward pressure and me putting my knee on it. So I gotta uh, pump the brakes and figure this out so this comes out good, not good enough. Made some solid progress on the light panel, as you can see. I left the last row there so we can get a little bit of time lapse on that. I found it a lot easier. I take the level, I hold it to the very end of the two holes. I use my fingers to just feel that it's at the same spot, draw the line, cut it freehand. I was fighting with the clamps and boards and levels and the T and just all sorts of stuff to try to get it perfect. And the more I fought, it seemed like the less it came out. So I took a break, <laughs> went up before I got angry, <laughs> came back, and now I'm just doing it more of a freehand way, but I think it's actually coming out a whole lot better. So that's what I'm doing on this. and. The second two rows I did are way better than the first two rows using that method, so go figure. There it is, looking pretty awesome. Aside from me connecting two of the wrong holes right here, I'm pretty happy with it. There's a couple spots where the hole bubbles out a little bit. When I take the sandpaper, I'll get a couple different grits really smooth just to finish it off and a little rougher so I can get those bumps down so it's more of the perfect pill shape. I think this will make a good template.